set for football now on a rainy Sunday afternoon. And off we go from Cleveland. On the return, here's Tyler Scott. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. And they will be let out by their rookie quarterback. His ability to adjust on the fly is almost unmatched in the game right now because it leads to a couple of snaps per game where you just sit back and ask yourself, how did he pull that off? Opponents can practice and prepare each and every week all they want, but this guy, he is hard to corral. On first down, Williams. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Now a second and ten. Looking to throw. Williams. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Back to throw. Williams. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. They'll run for the first time with DeAndre Swift. Taken down at the 47-yard line. Now we're going to get a stoppage. It appears to be an injured bear on the field. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Here's a second and eight. They'll run the draw here with Swift. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. Looking to throw, Williams. Ah, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. Fourth down, Corliss Waitman now on to punt. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. So here are the Browns under head coach Kevin Stefanski. Leading them out, a first-round pick in the 2017 NFL Draft. Former Clemson Tiger, Deshaun Watson. And he's exactly the man you want in control of your offense. Excellent arm, good zip on the ball, not afraid to use his legs when he needs to. And what he's excelled at doing is making plays when the first read isn't available or when the pressure's about to get to him. Now a first down throw, Watson. This one complete to Jerry Judy. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. First by him near the 35. And he's going to have a Browns first down as he's able to get this up to the 37-yard line. 
We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now Watson. Open man, he completes it to Judy. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. Right back to Judy, and it's complete. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Here's Watson. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. Well, the first drive here and the first time that we've called the big tight end's name. But I, I can assure you this, Charles, it, it won't be the last. No, it won't, because when he gets going, now it opens up opportunities on the perimeter because that'll draw the defense towards him in the middle of the field. Now your wide receivers are getting involved as this game goes on. Now a throw here going to be taken in by the tight end to Joku. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. They go with Chubb on second down. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script. You go through your play calling. You go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. And it'll work his way closer to the goal line as he's got five down to the three. Hat tip to that offensive line. They're clearing some holes, even down here deep in the red zone. And that's a nice pickup on the ground on first and goal. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. They'll try the air now with Watson. Touchdown, Browns! Jerry Judy from three yards out. And the Browns get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Footing always a concern, but the extra points up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25.
Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. They'll start on the ground with Swift. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. And they run the option on second down. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't, and at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so he didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and ten. And he'll be taken down here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The Bears with the football. We get set to begin quarter number two. As they've got it with a second and four coming up. On the option to give to Swift here. And great blocking downfield as he's got this almost to the 35-yard line. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they stouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop it. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. On second down, Swift. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The Bears on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll try and run here with Swift. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. They give him seven yards on the play, and they do pick up the conversion on third down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. They made a nice effort to stick him with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. Second and six. They will run straight ahead with Swift, and they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. 
43 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. Back to throw. Williams. Throw right side is into the hands of his tight end, Everett. Touchdown! Gerald Everett. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Bears are an extra point away from drawing level. Well, down in this part of the field, CD, they love to get him the football. And right there, a little pitch and catch for the score. Yeah, and he's such a weapon when it's that close to the end zone. And they love being able to rely on him to make those kind of catches. Talk about trust, talk about confidence, and he produces. Santos with the extra point, and we are tied at seven. A pretty long drive that time, 11 plays all told. And the end result is a Bears touchdown. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Now Deshaun Watson and his offense heading back out there. The last series, the ball never hit the ground. Six to six, touchdown pass. So whatever he did then, do it again, right? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of when I watched the best quarterbacks throw seven on seven, or even routes versus air. They're accurate. The receivers catch it. The ball never touches the ground. Or if you want to take it to basketball, a well-executed fast break, right? Pass, 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 finish at the rim, basket. Yeah, ball never hits the ground there either. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb, and he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Watson. He'll get this to Chubb out of the backfield. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. So nothing doing there. And now it's third and four. They tried to swing it out left into the flat, but the defense, they were very principled there. It felt very West Coast offense, didn't it? You know, you know their expression, right? On a West Coast offense, when they throw the ball, it's either going to be a touchdown or a check down, meaning they like to press it downfield. If they don't have it, swing it out, which is exactly what we saw there. But how about the great pursuit and tackle to make a nice play? And that is how you respond after taking one on the chin to begin this game. Give up a first drive touchdown, go back out on defense, and completely shut them down to force a three and out. On fourth down, Corey Bajorquez gets set to punt for Cleveland. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return, and the Bears take over. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out, looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. They suspected it. It was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. This is second and eight. Operating from the gun, Williams looks for the out route, and it's complete to Komet. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large-body tight ends, and why not? 
Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. Give him back-to-back -back catches now. That one for 16 and another first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Now Williams throwing on first down. He's going to air one out. And that is incomplete. Similar to a shooter in basketball just connected on the previous shot. They run another set for him on the next play. Now we had a guy who made the catch. They tried to get the big one downfield, but came up empty. Here's second and ten. They'll run right here with Swift. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Jackrabbit. Jackrabbit. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. All knotted up at seven. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Williams from the gun on third down. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. And he will have the Bears first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. And good yardage there on first down because sometimes all you need to do on the screen is get one key block. That might set your man free, and that was pretty good pursuit to the football defensively, or it could have gone for more. Looking to throw on second down. Williams, and he'll find his man on the out route. That's Allen. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Looking for the out route, and he's got more. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. They'll look to throw again. His throw incomplete. But he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Again, he'll drop to throw. Open man, he finds Komet. Touchdown, Chicago. A 14-yard touchdown. And the Bears will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and that makes the score 14 to 7.
Well, after the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. And the Browns going to go on offense one final time in this first half. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. A little under 30 seconds to go. We'll see how they play it here on first and 10. Watson now to throw. And that one's going to come up a little short. It's incomplete. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Throw left side, caught by the tight end to Joku. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. To throw is Watson. Right back to Njoku. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. That'll go for a gain of seven. And it's second down. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this. Back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent gain. Here's Watson. That's complete. It's Elijah Moore. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. On first down, it's Watson. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byard. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. Okay, partner, no surprise to you. I'm going to look at this from the defensive perspective. In the rain, you have to be more cautious trying to cover passing routes. Why? The offense knows where they're going with the football. The receiver knows the route he's going to run. You have to make sure you keep your footing underneath you. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the right hash, this from 53. And this is off the left upright. And it comes back. It's no good. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our E. And OK, so much for our halftime break. Apparently, we're going to get right back to it. Welcome back. Charles and I settled into the booth, ready for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. 
And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well and they've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. 55 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Now a pass hauled in downfield. Uh, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. Uh, that's the kind of play this offense desperately needed. They've got to be saying, our defense has kept us in the ball game. We're down, but we're certainly not out. And maybe that was the spark that they've been searching for. So the big play has them all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. Now it's Watson. And that is taken in by Njoku. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. A really nice gain of 25 yards. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. Followed it up with another nice one here. And before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. They'll run with Chubb. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Only a yard that time. Second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. Chubb again. And he'll be stopped up short as the tackle is made at about the three. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run. And Joku pulls this one in. He's got it for a Cleveland touchdown. A three-yard touchdown pass, and the Browns are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. No surprise there, third and goal down here. That's where they're going to look for their tight end. Yeah, you want that big guy running his routes because it doesn't matter who they cover him with. If it's another big guy, he might use his bulk against him. If it's a shorter defender, might go over the top. Either way, you tend to find a little bit of a mismatch in that area. Hopkins with the extra point, and we are tied at 14. Nothing separating these two teams on the scoreboard as the kicks away here. Taken at the goal line. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. Their halftime lead now evaporated. We're back to level following that touchdown a moment ago. And that shouldn't change the mindset a whole lot from an offensive perspective because they already knew this was going to be a hard-fought game. Now they just need to go out, execute their game plan, and keep moving.
Williams now on first and 10. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, that's where this Cleveland crowd, the dog pound in particular, make it difficult on opposing offenses. It looked like they might have had troubles communicating at the line, and it leads to the incompletion. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Throwing again, Williams. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Komet. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball, how much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. And they run the option here on first and 10. And he stopped immediately there. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Looking to throw, Williams. And that's out to the flat for Swift. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. I haven't met a quarterback yet that didn't enter the league with a massive chip on his shoulder if he wasn't a first-round pick. They want to show the league that they made a big mistake. Determined to get the first down there, no hesitation at all to tuck it and go. I bet he would have tried running through their entire defense if it meant reaching that marker. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Third quarter, all tied up. This is second and ten. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. And this was a little bit of the knock on him coming out of college. Sometimes the concentration could wander a bit. This should have been a big play, but somehow he's not able to corral it. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Back to throw. Williams. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 21. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Williams. Open man is Komet, the tight end. And this will be a gain of six when it's all said and done. Down to the 15 from the 21. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Here now, second and four. On the option to give to Swift here. And he's brought down. 65 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. It's a big place in the passing game on this drive. And here's one out of the running game. So the passing game loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. Swift. Diving for the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown. 
So he had the nice run to get him down there, was stopped just short of the goal line, but they go right back to him, CD, and he delivers to finish the drive off. A little extra determination there, don't you think, partner? You notice he didn't tap on his helmet and say, get me out after the run down to the end zone. He said, I almost got in. I'm going to get in on my own. I'm staying in, and he carries it across the goal line. Santos with the extra point, and the lead is now 21-14. So that one a long 11-play drive, and it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Ready to take over again on offense, out comes Cleveland. They did what they had to do to start this third quarter, went down, got the touchdown to cut the lead, but the matching touchdown a moment ago, and we're right back where we started at halftime. Yeah, you're exactly right, partner. They had a little bounce in their step after scoring that first touchdown, but the defense gave one up, and that's the problem right now. Can they get better play from their defense while they continue to score on offense? Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10 at their own 24. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Back to throw, Watson. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Here is third down and four. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. The offense on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and four. A shotgun snap for Watson. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. Nice tackle, nice play by Kevin Byard. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. One yard is the loss. They back up even further to a third and 15. I think it might be time to move to a different section of the playbook there because back-to-back -back runs, both for loss. Now they have third and long coming up. Third and 15 here after the first and second down plays went in the wrong direction. Oh, he'll air this one deep for Judy. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. I've got a good friend in football who always talks about predictive history. He's got one of their two touchdowns. You can understand why they tried to find him again. Weren't able to connect, but the thought, that was good. The Browns send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. He 
Here's Jones on the return. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. So a good punt there, but a nice return of 11 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 88 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. And we've got movement. I think this is against the Bears here. Let's find out. Hey, the crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. Still first down. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. Moore, the man in motion. Once again, it's Swift. And he's going to take this across the 50 into Brown's territory. Four yards there on the carry, gets it back to second and 11. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. No gain that time, and it leaves them with third and 11 coming up. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. What do they have for this? Third and 11. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10 at the 20. He'll start things off with a handoff to Chubb. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there. And that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run. But for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, OK, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Second down, here's Chubb again. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. Well, now, after all of this, hang on here, because he appears to be shaken up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Third and five. Now Watson. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. Don't do us like that. So pass interference, the call, and that does not look to be going over too well on the defensive side. 
or on their sideline because I believe their head coach is saying right now, hey, you've got to call that both ways. Watson on first down. Over the middle, Amari Cooper, it's complete. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll make it second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. This is third and two, maybe the biggest play in this football game. Again, they turn to Ford. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. Give him seven yards on the play as they do pick up the third down conversion. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. But they went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. On first and ten, Watson. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. And he'll take this from one 47-yard line to the other, a gain of six. Now second and four. Here's Watson. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there, tried to force it in. That one, he's fortunate, just fell incomplete. Well, the elements, the crowd, the situation, this is NFL football at its best. Here's third down. Watson. And it is caught. Oh, no, he lost the football. And this is picked up by the Bears. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. And maybe that one caused by the weather. Of course, the rain coming down. Charles, can you maybe, when you're carrying that football, grip it too tight in the rain? I think that you can, and it's such a delicate balance, too, because when you grip it so tight, sometimes it'll slip out from your body. You squeeze it too hard, and it'll pop out on its own. I've actually had running backs talk to me about that, that when they've tried too hard, even in perfect conditions, the ball gets away from them. They've got to find that good balance, carrying it firmly, yet at the same time under control. The Bears in good field position to start out first and 10 at the 39-yard line. On the option to give to Swift here. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. He's going to get it again, just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. They'll stay on the ground with Swift. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Now they'll fake it there on the jet sweep, and instead, here's Swift. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 1.51 left.
Second and ten. Herbert powering up the middle. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. This now a third and four. A handoff, Swift running to the left. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. So now it's Watson and the Browns down 21-14, a little under 30 seconds remaining. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and 10. to throw Watson and his throw is going to be incomplete there have been quite a few plays they might look back on and say we really have hurt ourselves and that was another example and this is late game execution everything on the line so it all has to come together properly the throw is made where's the catch got to catch in that spot now Watson and his throw is incomplete. Two-minute drills, they're tough enough, pressure-packed enough, and these elements makes it significantly tougher. And you don't have the margin where you can say, okay, I can allow for certain things and maybe change up a little bit. Because it's a two-minute situation, you've got to try and make the same plays you would make if the elements didn't exist. Watson. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. Give them credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. Desperation time. Watson on fourth down. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Bears are going to get the football back, and they're going to get it in great field position. The win for the Bears just around the corner. They go down to a knee. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And we talk so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys, if we do this, this, and this, we'll win. And usually they say, if we win the turnover battle, we'll win. Well, here's the proof right there. Win the turnover battle, go on to victory. Now the guys believe you move on to the next lesson where you have to convince them. This one is now planted. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long from Cleveland.